everyone. I hope you all are having a good evening. Welcome to Midnight Hatter Live, the weekly variety show where we talk Gunpla, Gundam, and gaming. I am Steven, aka Midnight Hatter, your host. Joining me as always is the explanatory Adam Blue, and we have a special guest with us this evening, Ash, aka Takaholic. Uh, the social media admin for Gundam Explained and a content creator in her own right. Thank you for joining us, Ash. How are you doing this evening? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. No, this has been a long time overdue because, you know, I remember when we got to, you know, chatting on Adam's show about, Mm -hmm. you know, everything from F1 because it, it, it was perfect timing because when you were on Adam's show, it was right when the Gundam F1 promotion was going on. And Adam yeah. and I were like, who cares about F1 racing? <laughs> and it was like, oh, <laughs> Ashley does. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah. And uh, I hope you all are having a good time. I see uh, we've already got Alter trash talking me in the chat saying more oh, like geez. mid nerd hatter. Am I right, wow. gamer? <laughs> 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 uh, so yes, it seems like it's gonna be one of those shows tonight. Mm-hmm. But cool. we've got we've got a fun show planned. We're gonna be talking about some gumpla, some gaming, and you know, hopefully what what I am hoping is that Ash, you are going to be able to talk Adam and I out of this vicious position that we've been put in. <laughs> where we are so anti jrpg that we're missing out on some of the best games out there on the market (laughs) so we're going to give you the opportunity to give us your sales pitch but before we get into all of that um give us you know sort of your background for for the people in the audience you know obviously that have not met you that have not uh chatted with you on discord and everything you know tell us about you tell us about your introduction to gundam and your introduction to sort of this community yeah um so i think like growing up um i have to thank my mom because my mom is a huge um, sci-fi fan um so growing up i just remember watching so many like sci-fi shows like um star trek especially next generation and deep space nine um adromeda um x files um stargate battlestar galactica the list goes on so i had I don't know why, but I've always just had sci-fi all around me, had a huge interest in space as a kid, especially. I was like that kid that was so hyper fixated on the planet Pluto and having to say, Pluto is a planet too. <laughs> yes. We, and, we, I will die on that hill. Like, exactly. your kids need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah, and even um, I didn't have cable growing up just yet. I didn't get cable until like I was in like um my second year in um, high school, and I just remember too growing up too. I had this like fascination of like space sci-fi and watching a show on PBS called Nova and watching the uh, kind of like detail of like space and space exploration and stuff like that. So that has always caught my interest. Um, I was introduced to like anime right around I, the time I started um, like middle school. My younger cousin got me into Toonami and at the time he was really into um, Naruto. So anytime I would come to stay um, with my relatives, we would watch like um, shows like Lupin the Third and, and um, Roni Kenshin, and then I also remember seeing um, Gundam for the first time too. I remember seeing like an episode of G Gundam and Wing, so it was probably around like ninety, uh, two thousand one, two thousand two, when it finally aired stateside, and then speeding up to like when I was a sophomore in high school, um, there was this thing called Gundam Seed that aired, and. and I fell in love with the animation, the story, the characters, the mobile suits, and the music especially, which um brought a huge attraction of my love for like the pop culture aspect. Um, music from like Team Revolution and Nami Tamaki, who did a good chunk of the music from the series, is what really got me solely into um, Gundam. 
Nice. Yeah. Well, and Adam, I know that you appreciate that because music yeah. is so part of like the ambiance that is, you know, part of any media, whether it's gaming, whether it's an anime, yeah. whether it's a movie, music is such a powerful component of creating a narrative. I'm glad you brought up um, Lupin because that is an anime that I feel like I feel like everyone loves Lupin, L Lupin, yeah. Lupin, however you want to pronounce it, Lupin Third. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone loves it, but no one seems to talk about it, which is kind of like, yeah. it, it's mm -hmm. kind of like the opposite of Gundam, where it's like, you know, mm -hmm. Gundam is one of these things where it's like, you know, everyone has a Gundam series that they like, even if they don't like, you know, UC or they don't like Seed or they don't like whatever series. Right. It's like everyone likes Gundam a Gundam and they talk about it all the time that's yeah. kind of why we're here but like nobody talks about Lupin <laughs> yeah I, I will see that like when I get things suggested to me on streaming services and I'll see that series Lupin or whatever and I'm like yeah that seems like something I've seen before but like um yeah I wonder if I should check it out maybe yeah know. Yeah, I would say it's worth doing. I mean, That's there's cool. a uh, Miyazaki direct, and correct me if I'm wrong, because Ash, your knowledge of anime is far better than mm -hmm. mine, but I do have a Blu-ray box set of Miyazaki films, and one of them is The Castle of Cagliostro, yes. the, the Lupin movie. Mm -hmm. So he was not associated with the series, but just that film, right? Right, that's correct. That's um, he yeah. liked the series a, a lot to want to um, create a film. Um, for the franchise see and that's pretty cool because you know for as much of a fan as directors like uh, Hideki Anno are of Gundam it's like right. you know Anno has not gotten to direct a Gundam film so yeah but <laughs> y y it makes me wonder honestly because like if you're going to talk about like live action Gundam films wouldn't Anno be your choice considering that now he has live action directing mm -hmm. chops come that's a good point but i feel like he's too much of an auteur to be directing uh, a gun a movie where Ban sunrise would probably kind of be <laughs> like uh let's scale back you know because he has his thing that he does so you know like with godzilla too how we kind of added that element and um it wasn't there like common rider also he did shin common rider i and think so and if I'm not, I've never seen the Kamen Rider show, but I know the Shin Kamen Rider was like super gory and bloody. Like, and I don't know if that's really <laughs> Kamen Rider. So, you know, he adds his element. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, uh, you know, I'm glad that you were a Toonami kid like I was, like so many of our audience. So, oh, you know, it's like yeah. everyone people. in our age group is all like, you know, man we we just remember these cartoons that we used to watch when we were in middle and high school mm -hmm. and it's like now it seems like they're so much more accessible and right. not only that there it's like it's it's almost more acceptable to be a fan of those cartoons than it was when we were kids right <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that's a good point i didn't think about that yeah because and i was one to not watch them because i was like right. i think they're nerdy but what did i know <laughs> I was too busy playing Goldeneye. On the right, he was, he was busy bullying us. <laughs> <laughs> I was that other type of nerd, the, the gamer nerd. So speaking of, of gamer nerd, um, you know, we were talking earlier, like kind of before, before the show started about, um, you know, video games that we were all kind of into at the moment and right. the sort of RPGs that we were playing. Um, Ash, tell us about the games that you've been playing recently. I've always been um, like a huge fan of JRPGs, especially like anything from like Final Fantasy or the Tales of series. I think Square Enix has kind of gotten a hold of me lately, especially with the new um, remake of um, Final Fantasy VII. Of, yeah, Final Fantasy VII, yep. and it was actually my introduction to Final Fantasy. Um, oh. it's just a fun game, actually. I just, I just love like just kind of like tactical rpgs as a whole voice acting and just the art overall art style is what really captivated me and i'm just like finally it's out and just playing the game i've been so hooked to it um, a, a lot of people have been really excited for that um and, and i'm glad that, that you had an opportunity to uh play the original first i gotta give a shout out thank you aqua vengeance for the super oh, yeah. chat cheers <laughs> i appreciate you 
thank you for helping out with the uh, uh, spring tide event. It was my pleasure. Honestly, that was a lot of fun. Uh, was. I would do it again and again and again because that was, you know, th- that's what we're here for is like celebrating Gundam, celebrating gaming, celebrating yeah. all the things that, uh, you know, bring us joy. So thank you for that. Shout yeah. out to you, Aqua Vengeance. What you were saying, Ash, about, you know, Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in particular, you know, it, I, I never, I, I kind of infamously have never played a Final Fantasy game outside of Final Fantasy Tactics, which I know is less of the RPG and more of like a grand strategy type, you know, turn-based um you know strategy game i guess whatever you would call it something more akin to like fire emblem which i I think you're a fan of as well right yes yeah fire emblem i've never played fire emblem either Um, yeah it is a lot different than a typical jrpg yeah right yeah it's something that i think you know kind of vibes with uh with with what i tend to yeah what i I tend to get with a little bit more often i think the and and maybe this is part of what spoiled me on jrpgs is that like the only one that i remember playing when i was younger was vagrant story yeah did, did you did you play that one on on playstation one um not i've heard of it but i never got a chance to play it though but i heard great things about it it's uh it, it's it's very similar to like a final fantasy or a legend of dragoon something like that but um what i thought was interesting about it is that you know when you are in that combat phase you're mm-hmm. still in like a 3d space and so you can still kind of move and position yourself in you know advantageous or disadvantageous ways so that was kind of interesting to me it, you know compared to like you know the classic final fantasy you know enemies on this side you guys are on this side like select the (laughs) yeah (laughs) but um but rebirth is not like that correct right right Mm -hmm. it's a little bit more different like Mm -hmm. because there's like a really huge story element to it and it's like Mm -hmm. as you progress in the game of course you know you're going to be facing like certain enemies and then getting up to that final boss level too um, and also, I'm glad that you actually mentioned Final Fantasy Tactics. I actually am a huge fan of that one as well because I love the one that came out on the Nintendo 3DS back in the day, and it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I love, and I think that that's probably why I played it is because it was a mobile game, and I know Adam will appreciate oh. that because like mobile yeah. gaming is like our thing now. Yeah. <laughs> handhelds out there but that that was a good one and i think i want to say for me the first fire emblem was from game boy advance yeah but i had only got that i think because of the final fantasy tactics that was on there or vice versa because before that yeah i never i had tried playing uh the uh, one of the final fantasies on super nintendo i forget which one and it was yeah like we've talked like the combat and it's because it's really about the story yeah. Even though the combat can be interesting. And it's funny because I did play the remake, Final Fantasy remake recently just to try out the combat. And I was really surprised how cool it was. But it still kind of yeah. has a system to choose things. So it's like real-time oh, yeah. combat, but then you can go into this mode where you can like choose. And I feel like that is makes it the best of both worlds in terms of combat. Mm-hmm. So. That's why I think you'd like Knights of the Old Republic personally. <laughs> but like that um, type of real time combat, I uh, you know the Final Fantasy real time combat is like uh, high end uh, modern combat. Like I'm really surprised how good. Like if if Knights of the Old Republic they did a remake and they did it like that, then oh yeah, I would be. <laughs> Alas, the Knights of the Old Republic remake is dead. I know. Yeah, that was some recent news. <laughs> um, uh, shout out to no one, aka all, a, aka Alter. Thank you for uh, Canadian five dollars for also not realizing that Harry Sumo is gold as a Quattro Vagina reference. So I feel less stupid for taking <laughs> twenty years to realize it. Not to not to totally derail the conversation, but did you guys know of this uh, turn A reference to Zeta Gundam? No, this, uh, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. So Harry Ord being like the Quattro character in Turn A Gundam, um, part of the reason that his sumo mobile suit is gold is as a reference to the Hyakushiki oh. from Zeta Gundam. Oh, that's cool. Oh, Which that's I will cool. take credit for pointing out to Alter that uh, 
that <laughs> Harry Ord of all of the Shar clones in Gundam is the only one that wears sunglasses and not a full mask. Oh, okay. Similar to a yeah, yeah, quattro. exactly. That's pretty quattro good. Someone. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so let's let's hop back into this discussion about, you know, turn based combat in video games and, and story driven video games in particular. So, Ash, you say that, like, you know, what draws you to the Final Fantasy series is less the mechanics of it and more mm-hmm. the, the characters and the plot. Right. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. Like a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, what I, um, and it's kind of like that with any other, um, JRPG I get into. It's just, if the story gets me hooked and along with the characters, and then I'm just like, okay, more of the system based tactics come second. And I'm just like, okay, I'm more engrossed in it. And it really encourages me to, like, keep playing until the end. That's Do pretty you good. Find yourself like getting protective over certain characters because of story elements, and so like yes. as it comes to like the gameplay, you might play them more often, but you might be like more protective of them, less likely to let them, you mm-hmm. know, faint or die. Right. <laughs> now, of course, that's a bigger issue in the Fire Emblem series because oh you yeah, know, there's permadeath, and so like if you like a character, like you don't <laughs> you don't play with their. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a good point. It and it's interesting in games where you have to worry about and so yeah, that's where there's that interesting intersection when it comes to these RPGs because I think the story is at the center, but it's there's the other element that's different in each one. Is it you know player choice that made the rest of that game good? Is it the combat you know? But the center is that story. You know, it reminds me of like how popular the Persona series is, especially Persona Three. Yeah, I haven't played it. Have you played it? I am a huge fan of Persona. Oh, okay. um, I actually um, nice. got into it not too long ago, probably about like two years ago. Um, one of my friends also likes Persona. She may encourage me to play it. And um, I also own an Xbox. So I when some of those games are over there. So like one of my first introductions to it was um, Persona 5. And oh, okay. it was that... Um, it was the remake of that game and I played through it and it was pretty fun. And it also has um, animes as well. So I watched a couple of the animes to kind of get well acquainted with the characters. And yeah, it's pretty fun, especially um when they re-released, um, I think, Persona 3. Yeah. That one was pretty fun too. Yeah. And so that one, it seems like the characters are a big deal. Like, so yeah. when you said you there was an anime for it too you watched? Yeah, so and is it um, about the mm-hmm. characters too? Like it's or is there? Yeah, okay. it, I feel like the way the anime was created, it was kind of geared to kind of getting more people to play in the games oh, as well, because okay. um, they took like a good chunk of the story element from you know each of the Persona games, and you know kind of get people more intrigued and hooked to the game. And, yeah, oh, it's pretty it's good. Me- so this is a series that I'm not as familiar with, but mm-hmm. I love the idea of tying in an anime series to kind of help market the games. Right. You know, uh, Final Fantasy, I guess, did this kind of like with Advent Children. I actually liked the Spirits Within move, movie. Yeah. Like, you know, I know that it was kind of a little ahead of its yeah. time. Like people weren't quite ready to watch CGI movies yeah. yet. Hopefully... Yeah that's going to change around the time of requiem for for vengeance but um (laughs) are there any other you know rpgs whether they're jrpgs or western rpgs that you think Mm -hmm. could benefit from like an anime tie-in like i I would i would be interested in hearing you speculate on like what video game series needs an anime tie-in to kind of draw people into the story i think it really depends on like the game franchise itself. So, like for example, um, another JRPG I really love is the Tales of series, um, Tales of Symphonia, to be specific, because um, that was my introduction to it. Um, the interesting thing about t- the Tales of series is that they do add some anime and and um, sorry, anime elements to the game, and there have been some animes in the past, um, kind of promoting. Um, certain games that have came out um but for anything else like 
don't know. It really depends. Like um, another game I really mm. enjoy is more Western, but it's the Witcher series. Mm. And although it did yeah. get like a series, you know, it did get like an actual like live action adaption. Um, and it's a book as well, from my mm -hmm. understanding. So it's kind of like all of the series is so so <laughs> but the game really i think gives the book justice to be honest i feel like if they would have adapted a little bit better i felt like it would have been a little bit more of a catch-on so i think it just really depends all on you know how big people know of the franchise the company and then just basically the marketing enough if they have enough funds to create an anime it's you know, not like just an anime but like a series in general to yeah. kind of get people more hooked i feel like it would do you know really well to spit um, that, that's something i bring up with adam all the time where it's like if you're <laughs> going to adapt you know whether it's a book whether it's a comic whether it's a video game whatever you're going to adapt into like a series or a movie it's like what's it for right like yeah. is it to draw more people into the video game or is it to like create a new thing right? right and um you know i think that there are certain uh series and movies that do a really good job of that i know that there are tons of people that watched like the lord of the rings movies the peter jackson ones and they were like yeah. oh i'm gonna go back and read those books like wait these oh, are yeah. books um <laughs> but you know i, I wonder one, how many people watched henry cavill as the witcher and then were kind of like disappointed to find out like in witcher 3 it, it was funny my wife and i played witcher 3 together and she was like is it just mirrors like and she was like i love henry cavill but like he's kind of a wet sponge compared to this guy like she's like i, li I like the video game witcher more than henry Cavill. Oh, so he played the character different yeah i mean it was like much more like subdued and like ash what do you think it was, it was kind of like he was more mm -hmm. stoic and less like yeah. jokey oh yeah okay in, in the video game he he kind of like has these very um i know what you mean like he has he's 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 very focused, stern, but like he does mm -hmm. it with this like exactly. under like confident sort of ness where he will like yeah. make little. He quick. has a way of putting people down. That yes. Is yeah. Like yeah, how he exactly. can talk to people really good. Yeah. That's that's a yeah. Um, and, you know, so, I like the games. Yeah. You know? So the fact that you mentioned The Witcher is very interesting because like another Netflix series that I know was super popular, but I don't know what the impact it had on the video game franchise it was based on was Arcane. Did you watch Arcane? A little bit of Arcane, yeah. Like I, I'm not was, a League of Legends yeah. guy, so I I was like, who cares about this? But like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I found really interesting, like, cause the um. Like League of Legends, I mean, it already had like a really big following because yeah. you know, yeah. of the already game. Already super popular. Right. Yeah. And I think the thing with Netflix, when it comes to when they get a certain source and they try to adapt it, it can either be a hit or a miss. Um, when it came to Arcane, I think it was kind of like some people liked it, some people kind of wish it could have been done a little differently. So it was kind of like an in-between, kind of like a mixture. Like, would you say that people that like League of Legends were kind of iffy on it, but people that never saw yeah. it, don't know League of Legends were like, wow, that was cool. Yeah, that that's that's just how I felt uh, when I kind yeah. of was reading more about like how the how people felt about it once it was adapted and once it was released. Yeah. Isn't that funny how it's like that's kind of the way that most of these things work where it's like the core fan base that are probably the most interested in seeing something are the ones that kind of reject it the most and then you know sort of the casual like oh I'm loosely engaged with the franchise they're the ones that are like oh this is awesome like I love it yeah. <laughs> you know? right yeah it's like um, there was so many fandoms and like I have to catch myself on that as it's like as i'm getting learning more about gundam it's like okay i gotta watch myself every step of the way and <laughs> so uh gregory zirkoff says like the netflix adaptation went way downhill before cavill left that mm -hmm. you know that in in regards to witcher obviously this is this is from earlier but like yeah i think that you know what's what's interesting about that particular franchise is that henry cavill was one of the few people that was super committed to making the witcher successful and he was a huge fan of the game too right 
So could it, and I never thought about this, could it really just be he just didn't nail the performance? He just... There's there's actually a reason for that, because basically Cavill actually, you know, not only was he a huge fan of The Witcher, you know, gaming franchise, but he actually gave a lot of input in during the creation of it. And when he, I feel like the problem with it was when he left... It was more of Netflix not liking his input, and that just made him, you know, take an yeah. exit left. Um, and that's this is a sad thing because I've seen, I've heard of this before with certain creators when it comes yeah. to their properties. Like, um, example, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Um, that's being adapted. Um, I'm also a fan of the um, cartoon. Um, when I grew up watching it, and the creators originally was working alongside with Netflix, you know, to adapt mm, it. Yeah. And they butted heads and some of them mm. left the project. But I don't really know, like, the updated part, but somehow, oh. some way, they adapted it properly. So maybe they came back on to mm. work on it. So I'm sure different. it would be as if you got one of the three of us to work with Netflix on, like, a live-action Gundam adaptation, yeah. and we'd be like, no, 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 you, you, you can't, what are you doing? Like, you can't have, you know, Kai piloting the Gundam, that's not a thing that happens, so stop doing it, like. <laughs> exactly. Or, like, that's let's how make it happened this thing in the transform. It's like, oh, how about the white base transforms into a Gundam? It's like, no, wait a minute, that actually is kind of awesome. That's a fanfic for later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's yeah. <laughs> Tomino yeah. already. Yeah. That's that's right. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's it's very interesting, and it's such a it's such a crazy topic because you're going to get people on kind of every side of every argument when it comes to adapting media from one form to another, whether it's going to work, whether it's not going to work. You know, whether it should be a direct one to one translation or whether it should be something completely new so as to not create those kind of false associations yeah. with the original. And sometimes, like, I agree with that. Like, I think that, um, you know, to go back to an earlier uh, topic that I mentioned was like Knights of the Old Republic was a role-playing game that was like we are going to make ourselves as far away as possible from george lucas's star oh, wars yeah. trilogy and yeah. that way no one can have a problem with it we're not like disparaging the legacy of luke skywalker we're not doing any of that you know this is our own story that just happens to me in that universe and sometimes that's just the way to go yeah yeah that's uh that that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that. That's all I have to say it's about like, that. No, <laughs> <laughs> the word, words out of my mouth. I, nothing more I could say. Uh, <laughs> but on the topic of Gundam, uh, Ash, I see you've got some. I, I feel bad because like um, the audience can't see the Gundam yeah. that you have on display. <laughs> so I want you to show some of these off because I have yeah. been blown away. You um so so you know again some background like you only got into gundam you know fairly recently compared to like you know the the, the people that were like you know gundam wing fanatics um and then you only got into gunpla even more recently is that correct yeah like i've always been a gundam fan like you know like when it when c first year back in like i think it was like 2004 2005 Mm -hmm. so i was already like well acquainted with the series and i've watched like more of the au a lot more and then just finally got into watching uc thanks to you guys <laughs> and i love Zet zeta gundam which is my um, favorite oh nice and also i like the the moon moon arc i like oh, the moon yeah. gundam as well <laughs> and when it <laughs> came to like Gumpla as a whole like it was when the witch of mercury aired that i started seeing things about Gumpla, and i'm like okay i want to give it a try because prior like i was from like i've seen Gumpla before like especially like watching videos on youtube i think around like 2017 when ibo came out i started noticing you know people building the barbatos gundam and i was like 
I want to give that a try, but I'm not quite ready <laughs> to invest until The Witcher Mercury came, and I love the suits for that. So, yeah, that's what really got me <laughs> to building. And so, it, I mean, isn't it fascinating the way that, like, you know, you can appreciate the designs and the artwork behind these sort of um yeah. mechanical designs but then like once you get them in their hand in your hands it's there's something different right it's like there's something tangible right. going on and you can really appreciate the the engineering behind it mm -hmm. so what was your first gumpla kit kit that you built was it it was it an aerial or was it uh another it was actually and surprisingly it was actually um a gun mage kit that i built um it was a p band release of the farcia mm -hmm. I'm from Gundam Age. Um, it's that pink mobile suit. Yeah. Um, and I I should have pulled it out, but yeah. <laughs> no. But honestly, yeah. I think that that is so. Let us let us go on record here as saying that your first Gumpla kit was far more obscure and far more expensive than Adam's uh full armor real grade <laughs> unicorn. <It's> like, <laughs> It, yeah. it's like you went p bandai so, you, so yeah. you already went like limited edition and you went gundam age which is like a very obscure uh, very <laughs> scary. yeah so I, no i think that that's awesome because yeah. you know i think that a lot of people you know when they dive into gumpla it's like you know i want the aerial i want the zeta gundam i want right. like the, the the protagonist like the the main suit from the series and you were like Mm -mm, not me i'm going i'm going <laughs> in the deep end <laughs> you know there's actually a funny story what what led to me getting the fon varcia p bandai kit is because like i'm a huge fan of car captor sakura and i was like reorganizing my shows around then and i was like should i get a figure or should i get a gumbla and so i started looking up stuff because i mean i've watched a little bit of gundam h like prior oh. So I was a little familiar with um the series, and then when I remember seeing like the Farcia, I was like, oh my god, it has like this like floral element to it, which complements Car Captor Sakura. So I ended up yeah. just getting it because I thought it would complement my collection, which it does, which is pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that is awesome, and I mean even even Sakura itself, that's is Japanese for rose correct am i um or... oh so sakura is actually uh, for cherry blossom like the cherry oh, blossom, cherry blossom. Cherry blossom. Oh. okay i was like i know that there's a floral aspect behind sakura and that's why I yeah <laughs> that, that's why like everyone in the 90s and early 2000s their usernames on everything was sakura <laughs> yes that's so true <laughs> you know another thing too like the second gun that i got also, it, 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 I'm starting to catch like a scheme here because like the next one was the Rose Gundam from G Gundam, oh. and it was also the the P Bandai That's version. Cool, so that too. was your second, you know. Yeah. This is a very unique yeah. and like a modern, yeah. so like really good kit in general. That's yeah, really, it, it, cool. it's my favorite design from G Gundam, and I love it. <laughs> That's so awesome. So, so how many kits have you built so far? At least so. Okay, so first of all, how long in years have you been building kits, and then like how many kits have you built in those years? Surprisingly, I actually just started like um, June of two thousand twenty-three, so right around the time. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I please um, don't I've... say more than four, otherwise you're going to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually um, built up to thirty kits now. <laughs> so that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and the majority of the kits that I have is like I realize it's like either seed or uh, wish for Mercury Jason and a couple of UC here and there. Yeah, yeah. I sent you um yeah, some from you some I didn't know if you had or not. I remember when I you yeah. showed me what you had, had, I was like, hmm, what would be a, a good idea? Yeah, so yes. And I love the Zaku because um actually I'm doing um like a special custom with a friend for that Zaku that you got oh. me. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do first custom, or it's it's actually my second mm -hmm. custom. Like I did, like I just built it, and I'm still kind of learning mm -hmm. kind of the ropes when it comes to like painting mm -hmm. and oh, technique, yeah. the detailing. Yeah. Sure. Um, my friend, mm -hmm. just a little shout out to him. He, he's on TikTok. His name is Jen or Jen X Lab. 
Gen X dad labs and he does amazing labs. Yeah. He mm -hmm. makes some um, amazing customs of oh. Gobla and the first one I did with him was actually of the Choo Choo Demi Trainer. It looks like um it was inspired by my favorite flower, the lavender, and took in the color schemes of that. Very nice. And for the second yeah, one. That's my um, favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> Team purple, <laughs> especially lavender. Oh, um, yeah. And the second one I'm doing is based off of my favorite character from Full Metal Alchemist, Alphonse Elric. So we're kind of turning into that. <laughs> That's so cool. So, yeah. oh man, I, I'm like super excited to hear about this because, like, how yeah. do you, you know, are you going like full on like sculpting individual pieces to look like Alphonse or are you going like, you know, just to kind of represent the, the shape and the form of the armor that Alphonse wears? So basically after building it and then I actually shipped it to Jen, he um actually, he does amazing um, paint work. So what we're typically, what we're doing is we're kind of embodying the color of the armor we're using more like a um, kind of like like a like silver a cool with a blue, yeah, yeah, like a gray and like silvery kind of look with with a hint of blue to kind of because his armor has this like really interesting like silverish blue color. It does. Make it yeah, pop. it's it's and very use, cool. Yeah, it, and I mean I think that's reflective of his character mm -hmm. and sort of like the hot and cold dynamic of Edward and Alphonse, right? Is it's like Edward yeah. like the hot you know red coat exactly. he's he's the hot-blooded alchemist and then you have alphonse is like the kind of exactly. leveling hey you know i'm cool I, i'm the yeah. one that's gonna settle things down for everybody so oh, yeah. I, I mean that's that's awesome i'm so excited to see yeah, how those yeah. turn out oh, I, absolutely. honestly i'm i'm blown away that you have just dove so far into like the gumpla hobby as quickly and as fiercely as you have yeah um i've seen some of the builds that you do they're fantastic okay, do you, you find that like you really enjoy the build process or is there something like you know what is it that kind of draws you to the hobby the most is it the you know is it the building is it kind of getting more into this customization phase that you're looking forward to getting into or mm -hmm. you know kind of what is it uh what does it do for you i think it's a little bit of a little bit of everything really um when i because like i love gundam so much it's like one of my top favorite animes and you know, yeah. when I see certain mobile suits that I've like, for example, the Justice Gun, which is my favorite mobile suit of the Gun franchise. <laughs> I'm and... a big Atherin fan, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just seeing like, you know, just seeing like the design of the suit, I'm just like, I want to build it. I want to incorporate it in my collection. And then just interacting with you guys, I think the community has been like a big source of like motivation for me to want to keep building because you know watching Adam's videos when he reviews certain kits, watching um the amazing work that you do, Steve, when it comes to your builds and <laughs> <laughs> you're so modest. Here's my um... work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just watching your stuff because you you do such an amazing work with 3d printing and i've actually met a lot of people that incorporate not only their built but adding the 3d um, printing element to it it just blows me away and i'm just like yeah i want to keep building and kind of get into that customization phase and then i and then i just learn a lot um from you know interacting with people in the community and i love this community so much because everyone is so welcoming and they never judge you for your belt state yeah. from my yeah. experience people have been so kind and kind of lend enhancing like hey yeah yeah sure. like use this you know cutting technique and stuff like that yeah so it's, it's really it's been great. amazing both how deep the rabbit hole goes and also how willing people are to take you down into it yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know whether it's like uh, when it comes to panel lining or painting, and there's so many rabbit holes in all those techniques. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because when I went back and, you know, I, I think I do this probably like two, three times a year as I rewatch that NHK, you know, like when like the men who created Gundam yeah. documentary, I watch it like two or three times a year. And one of the <laughs> times that I watched it earlier this year is I was like, mm-hmm. one of the things that they brought up is how Gumpla really um reinvigorated the Gundam franchise as a result of people treating the Gumpla as if they were characters and that got me thinking a lot about you know um like what draws fans to like mecha anime in general and I was thinking to myself as I was driving the other day I was like you know what I think what it comes down to is that we can imagine ourselves piloting a mobile suit we can't oh, yeah. imagine ourselves being a transformer. Uh, yeah. Right. And yeah. so it's like when you exactly. have a model kit of a mobile suit, yes, it's like a character, but it's a character that you can control. It's not like a character mm-hmm. like you would like you are not the Justice Gundam, but right. you would pilot the <laughs> the infinite exactly. Justice Gundam. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's so that's one. something that I I like. I was like, I get it now. Is like, you know, one of the things that we appreciate about this hobby is the fact that it's something that we can easily imagine ourselves doing. Yeah, yeah, being part of it. It's like, yeah, with Star Wars and the spaceship battles, being in the the Gundam weaponry. <laughs> oh, now, yeah. of course, <laughs> I see. Alter's telling me, don't tell me I can't be Optimus Prime. Well, you, know. <laughs> no, you can, Alter. You can. And Zionic hey. Shadow, of course, saying that uh, Gumpla is freedom. Well, as yep. they say, well, as a- Optimus Prime would say, freedom is the right of all sentient beings. <laughs> exactly. <Pretty good. laughs> that was good. <laughs> I guess but, you really are Optimus Prime. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so there you go. I, I, I debunked myself. Uh, but so, uh, no, maybe, no, Sorry, Ash, I'm... you want to show off the, the justices? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, I was going to say, speaking of justice, <laughs> oh, I want to yeah. see some justice. <laughs> is, also, that... is it showing on the camera? Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the, um, I, I built this, like, I think, I mean, like last month or early this month. Um, This is the Master Grade Infinite Justice Gundam. And I actually bought like the um ah, what is that company called? They make like the decals. Um Delphi. Oh, works. oh Delphi. Or, oh, yeah, Delphi. Delphi. Yeah, Delphi. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at their website and they had like this really beautiful like um holographic um decals. So I bought them and it, it just fits so perfectly with this that one. Cool. And and I started using like like um like a glossy top coat because I got inspired after looking at like the metal build. Um Oh, you had to give it that uh, shiny least... look? Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, even though they're kind of pricey, I can at least kind of make it sort of like one. <laughs> you know, that that's on that other line of a custom, even though it's right. like not as much, you know, it, that's still the decals Shoot. being that like that and then giving it that glossy top coat. Exactly. Uh, that's cool. I watched a video today from, you know, call it um masochism but i tend to watch like some of these uh asian builders that do some amazing stuff and yeah. there's one that has been electroplating gundam kits so if you're familiar with like the 3d pl- printing and then electroplating process mm-hmm. what they do is they like dip plastic parts into water with um you know whether it's copper particles silver particles whatever the metal is and they charge the water and it binds the metal to the plastic and so you end up with like metal coated plastic parts which is crazy like so this guy has a 100 percent like silver zaku kit like like silver silver not like painted silver like silver metal which is silver (laughs) that is neat i'm gonna have to check that out later um, okay. yeah but but that's obviously that, that is like 15 levels above where we're at <laughs> yeah, right that's, like, yeah. <laughs> um, that's a rabbit hole <laughs> but in oh. which one's that one is that the real grade yeah so this is the um, real grade justice gundam and oh my god like i i i think this was like my second um mass i'm sorry real grade that i built and wow. it was really fun um 
and since it's kind of, I think it's kind of, I don't know if it's like a reprint or whatnot, but I didn't have issues with building this one like I did cool. like with the um the RX seventy eight that I still have. Yeah, and I wonder if because that was an earlier one, I bet this one was yeah later enough to where they got it better. Yeah, I was gonna say um before the Sananju and the new Gundam came out in the real grade line, the mm -hmm. Justice Gundam in the real grade was like that was like one of the oh. top five. Oh yeah if, if not like top two like that was one of the best ones that came out and i just love it so much like especially like just using the stickers that came with it like yep. they're usually really great. cool yeah yeah and with this one like i was like when i after i built this one i was kind of like going into like this phase of let me just spray it with matte <laughs> top coat the whole time because i kind of liked how it made the color the red a little bit more darker and, and yeah, yeah it came out pretty yeah hot. I, I do like that look i'm a big fan yeah. of that it makes it look less like a toy and more like yeah like a exactly. model of a machine you know yeah yeah and then speaking of a toy yeah, the SD. <laughs> yeah, totally. And is that like what what kind of SD? Because I'm not familiar. I know there's different types of SDs. Yeah, I think this was like the BB Cinchi Justice okay. Gundam. Yeah, okay. and this one, it was actually my first like um one of actually the third SD Gundam I built because oh. I do have um two others that are from the SD. What's it? W Heroes line. One was yeah. like the Warlock Aegis and the, it's a long name, it's like an infinite drag, like alternative dragon justice or something like that. So I had, I built those two and then I was like, okay, let me get the regular justice for this. <laughs> no, that, that's cool. Yeah. I, mean, cool when you see I, them I feel like each they're, other. oh God, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was saying it's cool when you see the SD near like the other ones, because then I can kind of yeah. see what it's referencing in it. I appreciate the SD look more. Oh, oh yeah. Because, yeah. like, at first, like, I wasn't sure if I was going to get any SDs, but I think yeah. I actually watched the um, SDW Heroes anime. I think it was, like, I think, like, the first one, and it was, like, 24 episodes, and I watched it, and I loved the story. It was just lighthearted and fun, and I was like, I'm going to get some of the kits <laughs> for That's that. That's how they do it. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, 22 I, minute commercials. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. No, that's also awesome. like um I mean there's so many of the SD line. I wish that they would expand like the uh, cross silhouette line because to me Absolutely. that's so much so much fun and mm -hmm. I, I would love to see some seed suits in the cross silhouette um, Oh, absolutely. portions. Yeah. Because that to me kind of seems closer to that like SD Gundam Battle Alliance scale oh, yeah exactly i like that and it's such a fun game too it is yeah Man, that, I, simple fun we're, we're, we're gonna keep defending that game that that's again that's another hill that we're going to die on is the sd gundam oh. battle alliance was a good game <laughs> good game despite it being just, sd exactly yeah, it, was, it was sd and so no one played it um, and that's happened before with some games in the past i think that are and I can't really think off the top of my head where it's like a property aimed for kids, but then when you play the game, it's like a deep, like sort of game for. And yeah. I, I can't think off the top of my head, but I know that has probably occurred. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I think that you would especially find that in like Japanese properties, whether it's you know, oh, yeah. whether it's associated with an anime or not. But like, yeah, I think that there are really? probably some JRPGs that are. Uh, a little more NC seventeen than oh yeah. <laughs> than <laughs> yeah. Uh, so with the Seed Freedom movie, kind of well, it's out. It's kind on of. the horizon <laughs> for us here in the West. Uh, there's yes. some of us that have read the novella, which has been mm -hmm. DMCA'd because oh. Bandai doesn't like Xeonic scans. Uh, yeah. but hopefully, you know, we'll get it like a full proper release in the West. Yeah. Do we have any um, Seed Freedom <laughs> <laughs> mobile I suits do. that we built? Yes, I do. Um, I actually bought the Infinite mm. Justice. I mean, the in, sorry, the Immortal, Immortal Justice. Justice. Of... Immortal. Yeah. You know, I blew it because I was going to introduce you guys on tonight's show. I was going to be like the Infinite Adam Blue and the Immortal Ash. So. Yes. <laughs> 
I will take, I will honor that name. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love this Justice so is one of the most awesome designs I've seen, you know, out, yeah. of, out of that, um, it, just out of like the promotional materials, because obviously I haven't seen the film yet. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's interesting to me that we already have like the 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 what's the the new freedom gundam it's like the rising mighty strike yeah the mighty strike i think yeah yeah, Yeah. something like that yeah so we already have like a master grade of of that freedom gundam do you think that we're gonna see a master grade of the immortal justice I hope so, because like, I have feel to, right? like, yeah, because I feel like when it comes to C, like, it's just the Freedom Gundam, Strike Freedom specifically, it gets so many releases. I do like, I do like the Freedom Gundam a lot, because I actually have the Master Great Freedom 2.0 I have to build at some point, <laughs> but I just really wish that the Justice Gundam gotten a little bit more love as well, because it's actually a really cool suit. Yeah, it's and I think it's the most pop- one of the most popular, right? Right next to the Freedom, right? Isn't it like, aren't they like a pair almost? Yeah, and then there's the Destiny Gundam too, which is actually my second favorite. Then the, then you know, then the Freedom, but I, I just feel like it really needs a little bit more love too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it to me, it's the equivalent of like the Shar and Amuro, right? Like, yeah, it would be the equivalent of of releasing a yeah. master grade new Gundam and then being like, hey, we're not going to do a Zazabi or we're going to do an RX-78, but we're not going to do Sharzaku. Like, exactly. If you're not going to do the justice, justice, then. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, man. So, so. So you said you've got the freedom that you're that you still need to build what Mm -hmm. is on sort of the sort of the agenda like the track going forward as far as gunpla builds for you i know you've talked a little bit about you know you're getting heavier into customization Mm -hmm. tell us where you're going as far as like you know what's sort of your gunpla ambitions yeah like one of my and one of my close friends has kind of challenged me to build every version of the justice gundam so I'm making that my goal. <laughs> you can't yeah, that's my way. I'm really, actually... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making that my mission. And I really do want to get more um, UC kits as well. Um, and so there are certain ones that really stand out to me. Like one that I'm really, really obsessed with is the Psycho Gundam from um, Thunderbolt. I love how that oh, looks. Yeah. Um, the Sy- wait, Psycho Zaku. Zaku. Yeah, yeah the from Thunderbolt. Yeah, and it just looks so cool. And a friend of mine who's in the in the chat, um, Frosty, <laughs> a Frosty friend of friend of Rohu, hey, shout out. Um, yeah, he um he's a huge fan of the Jagan, and um, oh. He told me more about the Master Great for it, and I love the design. So I'm just like, yeah, let me get that next. Oh, that's and a good idea. The Master Great. Yeah. 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 And definitely, um, once when it comes to building as well, I need to get a display. I still have one yet. So that's definitely in the works, too. I'm hoping to get one next month, finally. And yeah, this is spend the collection, definitely up my game when it comes to building and. Yeah, and this definitely, I know one thing is definitely, I want to get some more Wish for Mercury kits, definitely more UC, oh. and get some more of the um, kits as well. That's cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, th- there's there's so many different avenues that, that that you can really go with it. And that's why I think that this is one of those hobbies that everyone kind of can and should get mm-hmm. into. Like, I mean... A buddy of mine just turned 40 last weekend and I took him over to the Bandai Hobby store because you know he saw the pictures that I posted of my daughter meeting the Gundam and she was like, oh my god. He he was like, oh my god, I want to go check that out. (laughs) I was like, yeah, let's go look at it. And he was like, wait, Bandai makes Star Wars kits? And I said, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You loser. Like, let's do this. Cool. I mean, there's so many different ways you can engage with the hobby where it's like, you know, 
whether it's you just like the building, whether you like the painting, whether you, you know, maybe you just like posing the kits. Like there's so yeah. many different oh, yeah. ways that you can be a part of the everyone knows how much I hate the word community. Like we're friends. Right. We're not a community. Like uh, let's we're friends, yeah. <laughs> um you know, there's so many different ways that you can kind of engage with your friends online mm -hmm. with these types of like, you know, hey, you know, here's how I did this thing. And like, maybe you exactly. can get inspiration from that. So I'm really excited to see what you're coming up with, Ash. And I, uh, I hope that everyone team. else is too, because, you know, you're, yeah. Yeah, as with, as with everything Gundam related, you're bringing a fresh pair of eyes and a fresh uh, perspective yeah. on everything. So <laughs> this is this is awesome sure oh i do want to mention one thing too about the seed freedom film i don't know if you guys know but i know that it's coming to the west because i saw i forgot what account it was but they did announce that it is coming to us theaters on may 7th and i did oh, see something because you know um toward i think this week they're doing the premiere yeah yeah the okay. 31st. yeah so the one in anyway. may 7th Wow! Yeah, that's May that's seven. news to me. That's awesome. Yeah, because when Look I at saw that breaking it, news, yeah, I know <laughs> breaking news. Yeah, because <laughs> like um, because you know, like the two showings are gonna happen. Because I think in LA, um, they're and getting you. more yeah. guests. Yeah, like I think the Japanese voice actors for Kira mm. and Lacus are coming. Um, and then I think in New York, the English voice actress for Luna Maria is going to be there. And there's like a, a video of, um, I think the director of the film is going to be speaking to the And you get a paper crown. Yeah, a, a paper, paper crown. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it is so cool, though. And because I know like on the 31st, they're showing like the regular sub. And then in April 1st, they're showing the dub as well. Oh, yeah. And then a month later, we're finally gonna get. And I just April first, I see what they're doing there. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> no, I just looked it up though, and it's in my area. It's gonna be playing yeah. in my area. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Me and, too. And, you know, it's the same way I feel about like um, Requiem for Vengeance. Is like I know that since the trailer has yes. come out, a lot of people have kind of like the initial excitement has kind of like peaked and now people are like i don't want to see rec room for vengeance anymore the designs look terrible and i was like <laughs> it's the same designs why are you talking right. about I was surprised some Nothing of the comments I got. yeah and it's yeah people were starting to say bad things like what yeah but you know i'm gonna watch them both you, you, yeah. you can't you can't you can't judge things before you've watched them yeah exactly i was gonna say too like when i first heard of it i wasn't quite sure i was gonna watch it but then the more i saw the trailers and then you know adam's making videos and oh, yeah. you talking about it steve it i was like you know what this is pretty good i'm gonna check it out and it looks amazing i love the um the new trailer that came out too yeah i know it's i was surprised all the cool soon. stuff they showed yeah. yeah, and then the release of the um two duplicates that's gonna be yeah, coming out for too. <laughs> Are you guys gonna order them? Yes. I am I mean I'm gonna get the Zaku. I know Adam and I are gonna have this fight. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I'm wearing black, you're wearing white. I, I don't know. I feel like there's this. You know, I'm dynamic. team Zaku too, so I probably will be getting that Zaku too. <laughs> yeah. Solari. Um yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well we have covered so much ground tonight i've had so much fun talking to you about gaming and about gumpla um is there any any kind of closing thoughts you want to leave us with ash before we sign up for tonight yeah um first off like thank you for having me once again it's so fun i hope to pop up more <laughs> and not only your podcast but adams too and you guys like are huge inspirations to me like it's all thanks to like when i saw the gundam explains channel like about maybe a year like maybe two years ago when he was watched i forgot which um of the gundam animes you were doing a review on but i just love your work and nice. and the podcast and everything and like you guys have really helped me to expand my world when it comes to gundam especially with the UC side and it makes me love it so much. Like, like I remember when I watched um, 0079 for the first time, 
it was such a fun ride. I could not stop watching it. Yeah. And then Zeta Gundam, and I really love Camille and yeah. everything. Yeah, no, it's, it's great, awesome. stuff, isn't it? It's so surprising. <laughs> Like, yeah. yeah. Like, that, like, that is honestly, like, the most ringing endorsement of everything yeah. that Adam and I talk about because, yeah. it's like, that's that's all we really – just despite however um, – However spicy our comments might get about certain things Gundam related, <laughs> it's like our our ultimate joy is sharing Gundam and sharing Gumpla and sharing these things so that everyone can enjoy them. Yeah. So it oh, is yeah. it, it is great that that is the takeaway that you've gotten from it. That that makes me feel better about what we're doing here. Yeah. So, awesome. But no, thank you so much for joining yeah. us tonight because you have given us so much insight and so much just uh it's just been so fun talking to you about these things and yeah. getting your perspective on everything. And I hope that uh, you guys in the chat have been enjoying us. Uh, Alter is of course giving us, <laughs> giving us grief. <laughs> I'm with Adam on the Gundam being a better design. Steven's ass is grass for real, for real. <laughs> All right. Well, he's like, clearly that means it's time for us to go to bed. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> needs to go to bed. Um, well, cool. Adam, thank you as always for, yeah. uh, for for hosting with us. I've got my dog Cinderella here. She's curling up next to me because Aww. it's been rainy. It's a oh. rainy day in the it's river city too. here. Oh. So, <laughs> I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. If you have not checked it out, Adam did drop a video this morning about what are sides, which yeah. every time, Adam, when you when you drop these videos where you kind of like explain something from Gundam and you say like, what is this? I always think of <laughs> the Forky shorts, the, the like Toy Story shorts that my daughter watches all the yeah. time. It's like Forky asks a question like, what are Gundams? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh, we know another reference, like Mythbusters. I don't know. Adam gives me Mythbusters vibes when he does lore videos. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I never watched Mythbusters. Adam, yeah. Adam yeah. explains the universe. Let me let exactly me look at it. Just, just see what what's jiving there, because that's interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Well. Thank you, Ash, so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, guys, give her a follow on uh, you know down in the links in the comments below. We are, of course, going to be live tomorrow for the Gundam Explained show. And yeah, uh, yeah I've got some big announcements coming up soon. So stay tuned for those. But until then, we will catch you later. Have a good night, everybody. See you all. Happy. <laughs>